الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما أسكت الله سبحانه وتعالى that he grants us tawfiq and success likewise we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he writes for us rewards which are protected and preserved and that he overlooks our mistakes and our sins and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us last week we looked at the jewelry of the people of Jannah now we are edging towards the end of the description that has been given by Ibn Qayyim about Jannah in his poem al Nuniya. And the way he finishes the final few chapters, he is now talking about some of the things that you will see and experience in Jannah. Previously, we've been talking about the description of Jannah itself. So now he is saying, Faslun in this chapter, Fi ru'ya ahlul Jannah rabbahum tabaraka wa ta'ala. The people of Jannah will see their Lord, the Blessed, the Most High. Wanadrihim ila wajhihi al karim. And they will look at his noble face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, at this point, Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, said that this is very important because this is the purpose of our existence. The purpose of why you exist boils down to that moment. If you were there, then you have been successful. If you weren't, then you didn't have a purpose and you faded away somewhere else. Therefore, Ibn Uthaymin is saying here, it is the aqeedah of Ahl al-Sunnah. Wal jama'ah that they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us to account for what we have done. And as a recompense, the people of Jannah will get to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something which is very important because all other deviant sects, uh, the Jahmi and the Mu'tazina, the Khawarij, the Asha'ir, the Maturudiyya, all of these different sects, not the place to go into all of that. But all of them deny seeing Allah and seeing His face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only Ahl sunnah that say that we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that befits His Majesty. And here, the Shaykh will give a description based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah as to the belief of Ahl sunnah But before we get into that, nobody will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya. Nobody will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the barzakh. The first time that a person can possibly see anything from his Lord is on the Day of Judgment. There is a hadith which is agreed upon. And the companions asked, will we see Allah on the Day of Judgment? So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, do you have any trouble with seeing the moon on a clear night when it is full? In another narration he said, do you have any trouble with seeing the sun and the moon when there are no clouds in the sky? They said, no. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تُدَارُونَ فِي رُؤِيَةِ رَبِّكُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ Likewise, you will not find any impediment, nothing to block with you seeing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on that day. But there is another narration in Sahih Bukhari which is actually part of this narration but with another version which has been recorded by Sahih Bukhari where in the second version of Bukhari we have more of a description. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was asked by the companions, we will see Allah on the day of judgment. He said, yes, just like you see the sun or the moon on a clear day. Now it's very important that Ahl sunnah do not resemble Allah to the sun or the moon. I know it's obvious, but we have to say that. The resemblance here is the way that we look at the sun and the moon. It will be above us and it will be clear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this second version, of Al-Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah said, in actual fact, all of the people will be gathered on Yawm Al-Qiyam. And it will be said to the people on Yawm Al-Qiyam, man of them and the jinn of them, go to your deity on this day, this is the day of judgment. So who did you worship? Go to them, see if you can find some relief and some support. So the Messenger of Allah said, the people of the cross will go to the cross, because that's what they used to worship in the dunya, that's all they know. The idols will go to the idols, the people will go to their own different locations, but in the middle will remain a group hatta yabqa man kana Allah, the messenger of allah sallallahu said a group of people will remain and a caller will call out to these people where is your deity everybody else has gone everybody's picked their corner why are you still standing and they will say with full and firm conviction 
none of these are our lords. Our Lord is Allah. We only used to worship Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all false. These are all a depiction of something which is not a deity. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the caller will then call out, and they will say, how will you recognize Allah then? So then they will say, when we see Allah, we will recognize Him. This is the Iman, this is the Tawheed, and if you don't have it in the dunya, you won't have it on that day, may Allah protect us. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَيِكْشِفُ أَنِسَّاقِ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unveil his shin. And again, this is an issue with Ahl sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a shin in a manner that befits his majesty. We can't liken Allah to the creation. We can't imagine how that shin is. You can't compare it. We will say that that is a shin of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as the people on that day who used to worship Allah see that shin, they will fall into sujood immediately. They will be overwhelmed with the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not even Allah. It's not even His face. This is a part, just one glimpse. Except for the munafiq. The munafiq is a person who claimed to believe in Islam outwardly for the sake of his family, for the sake of his friends, for the sake of the community, for the sake of a partner, for the sake of wealth, for the sake of the dunya. He wanted to be included in the group of the Muslims for whatever reason, but inside he didn't believe in Allah. He wasn't interested in Allah's day. He's just doing it for this reason. This is the munafiq. Allah protect us. These people will see Allah as some of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah say, they won't see Allah because they don't deserve to see Allah. But they will see that the believers are making sujood, so they will want to make sujood as well. And they will be told to make sujood. On that day, they will not be able to. The Messenger of Allah is Hadith Bukhari. He said that their backs will become straight as if there is a plank of wood keeping them like that. They can't move. Then the description goes on. But there's another narration which actually talks about the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the munafiq. And the reason why I'm going to the munafiq is because we're going to talk about, the, the shaykh will talk about the description of the meeting where the person who's been successful with his Lord will get to that. But on the Day of Judgment, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there will be no one, this is a separate hadith, there will be no one except that he will be caused to stand in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And there will be a person who will come on that day and he appeared to have a lot of good deeds. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say to this person, Alam ukrimak, didn't I honor you? Alam usawwilak, Alam Uzawijak, did not I give you wealth? Did not I give you somewhere to stay? Did not I give you a family? Did not I give you animals to benefit transportation? Did not I give you a position of authority amongst other people? Did not I make you better than other people? So this person standing in front of Allah, he will say, he will say Bala. Of course Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to this person, Did you ever think that you were going to meet me? And this person, remember, it appears as if he's got a lot of good deeds. But he will say no. Why? Because he's a munafiq. He will say in front of his Lord because he has nowhere to run, I didn't really thought I was going to meet you. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, فَإِنِّي أَنْسَاكَ كَمَا نَسِيتَنِي Today, I will forget you just as you forgot me. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him to go away. Reject it. But he doesn't go to the fire. He is called back a second time. Hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ثُمَّ يَلْقَى He is then called again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him all of these questions again. Didn't I honor you? Didn't I give you a place to stay? 
didn't I give you a family? Didn't I give you wealth? So what tarbah? Didn't I give you position over uh, other people? He will say yes, of course, bala. And then he will ask him again, did you feel that? Did you think? Did you believe that you were going to meet me? He will say no again. Again, apparently he's got one of these good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him again, Fi inni anasitani. Today I will forget you just as you forgot me, and he'll be sent away a second time. Third time, the same thing happens again. He is called again. Now imagine what is happening to this person. He's standing in front of Rabbul Alameen. The fire is there in front of him. The deeds and the opportunity are over. What's his Lord going to do with this man? Third time he is called and he is asked these questions again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him again, did you think that you were going to meet me? Now look what he says for the third time. This is the munafiq. This is the trait of the munafiq that becomes apparent even on the day of judgment in front of his Lord, the audacity. Look what he says. He says, Ya Rabb, my Lord, amantu bik wa bi kitabik wa bi rusulik. I believed in you, I believed in your books, and I believed in your messengers. Wa sallayt, wa sumt, wa tasaddaqt. I fasted, I prayed, I gave sadaqah, I did everything that you told me to do. And then he will begin to praise Allah in the manner that he can. وَيُثْنِي بِخَيْرِ مَسْتَطَعَ He will start trying to praise Allah in front of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then say to this munafiq, هَا هُنَا إِذَنْ If that's the case, let's inspect your deeds. So this man thinks that, yes, he's got something now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to this man, we don't want your deeds. We want your witnesses. Where are your witnesses? So this man now, the Messenger of Allah said, وَيَتَفَكَّرْ فِي نَفْسِهِ On the day of judgment, imagine the Messenger of Allah is telling us about something that's going to happen on that. He will start thinking to himself, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْهَدُ عَلَيَّ Who is there who is going to be a witness for me? Who can witness for my iman? I've just lied to my Lord and now he's asking for a witness. Who is going to be my witness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then cover his mouth. فَيُخْتَمْ عَلَى فِيهِ His mouth will be covered, he can't talk anymore. And it will then be said to his thighs. وَيُقَالْ لِفَقْرِهِ وَلَحْمِهِ وَإِذَامِ It will be said to his thighs. It will be said to his skin. It will be said to his bones. انْتِقِي Start talking. Thighs start talking. Skin start talking. Bones start talking, you are the witnesses. This man's flesh and organs will start witnessing against himself and they will start proclaiming to his Lord that this person inside he didn't believe. This person has no real witnesses. In actual fact, we are witnesses against him because of the fact that he was a very sinful person. This person was a liar. So then his mouth will be uncovered after all the witnessing has been done. Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, وَذَلِكْ لِيُؤْذَرْ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ He will then try and start making excuses in front of his Lord. Munafiq. First he lies. First he has the audacity to say, listen, I didn't, in front of his Lord. I didn't believe if that was going to stand. Then he starts to lie and now he's trying to make excuses. This is the nature of kufr and nifaq. Doubtful. But the person of Iman and Sidq and truthfulness and Yaqeen, throughout his life he is certain. And he will die in a state of certainty. And he will see that certainty and he will be raised on that certainty on Qiyamah. Now he's beginning to make excuses. And the Messenger of Allah said, وَذَاكَ الْمُنَافِقِ This is the state of the Munafiq. On the day of judgment, and this is an example of a person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angered with. May Allah protect us and our loved ones. So, this is one side of what's going to happen. And what we learn from this is that a person will meet his Lord and his Lord will speak to him. But Ibn al Qayyim now, 
in establishment of us seeing Allah, inshallah, Allah make us of them from the people of success, he quotes three ayat from the Quran that the people of Jannah will see Allah. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Qiyamah, Wajuhu yawma idin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. On that day, some faces will be illuminated. Now, some of the ulama have said they'll be illuminated in and of themselves because they have the illumination of the people of Jannah. But some people will say from the people of Tafsir, these people's faces will be illuminated because of the fact ila rabbiha nadira they'll be looking at their lord and the illumination and the nur that surrounds that event will be bouncing off their faces ibn abbas in the tafsir of this ayah he said tandur ila wajhi rabbiha these people will be looking at the faces sorry these people will be looking at the face of their lord there's no other tafsir to the extent that it's been narrated from more than 30 companions عنهم, أجمعين, that the believers will see Allah in Jannah. It's been narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Ibn Mas'ud, Anas, Jabir, Suhaib al-Rumi, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Umar, Abu Huraira and others in the tafsir of this ayah. عنهم, That's the first ayah. Second ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Yunus, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا husna." Those people who did good, they will get the husna, they will get good reward. وَزِيَادَ And they will get a ziyada. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, Do you know what the ziyada is, Sahih Muslim? Do you know what the ziyada is? Then he recited this ayah and he explained to them that the ziyada, the extra, is to see the face of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that for their good deeds, they will get the good reward, but they will get a ziyada. Ibn Qayyim, that's the second. The third ayah. And this is now a piece of evidence that was quoted by Imam al-Shafi'i from the time of the Salaf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Mutaffifin, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَدْحَقُونَ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ On the day of judgment, the believers will be relaxed, uh, reclining as we did before and they will be looking on looking on to what? they will be looking at the kuffar they will be laughing at them they will be showing that they have been elevated above them and they sh- that they have been rewarded above them but in another ayah from Surah Mutafifin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ the believers will not have a veil between them and Allah, but the kuffar will have a veil between them and Allah. So Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said that this is proof that we will see Allah. Hence, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say there will be a veil between him and the disbelievers? That then tells us that between Allah and the believers, there will be no veil. The description of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lengthy and I think what we'll do is we'll go through that next week, inshallah, because it's already been 20 minutes or so. Now, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah has established for us, well today what we have established that the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Ibn Qayyim has explained to us that the believers will see Allah on the day of judgment and also in Jannah. Next week's lesson, inshallah, we will see a description of how the believers will meet their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, once they have entered into Jannah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he purifies us and that he protects us from nifaq and shirk and that he takes us in a state that he is pleased with us and that we attain the best of those rewards that he has prepared for his believing slaves in the akhirah. Ada wallahu a'lam. صلى الله عليه وسلم نبينا محمد بارك الله فيكم